Intel has now officially released their 11th generation desktop processors, and I'm sorry to say they just don't look all that appealing. You'd be hard pressed to finding anyone buying these over Ryzen 5000 processors or Intel's own 10th gen lineup. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. On the 16th of March 2021, Intel has officially announced their 11th generation desktop processors based on their latest Rocket Lake architecture. They posted a release briefing to their newsroom blog which outlines the different SKUs, specs, and prices. Along with that, they gave out information in regards to the new architecture features and what's different compared to last gen. Now, a lot of the stuff that they mentioned isn't really new info. Most of that was already talked about at CES 2021. The only important new information is really just highlighting the remaining Core i7 and Core i5 SKUs with official prices along with some cherry-picked, heavily controlled benchmarks. So I'm not going to go over all of that and just repeat what's been said. There are plenty of other publications out there that will gladly regurgitate all that info. What's really comical is that Intel is only just now doing their official announcement, even though CPUs like the 11700K have already been selling from various retailers across the world, with some tech outlets already having posted the reviews of the chip. So this has to be one of the worst releases I've seen thus far. People were saying that Ampere was the worst kept secret, but at least nobody had even reviewed an RTX 30. 80 several weeks before it was unveiled. These chips are supposed to quote unquote hit store shelves on the 30th of March and I'm sure that's when the review NDA lifts too but I mean at this point everyone already knows how they perform. I actually go over some of those benchmark results in a previous video and to sum it up the 11700K was a pretty big disappointment where it pretty much traded blows with the previous gen 10700K and most often lost against the 5800X with some big margins at that. Now Ian's review over at Anontech was seen as controversial since there were many folks in the PC hardware community going around saying that how this review wasn't valid because he was perhaps using an older BIOS that may have been limiting performance and that he was also running with a gear 2 configuration where essentially the motherboard was running the memory at half the speed that's actually set in the BIOS. So this gear 1 and gear 2 configuration is new with Rocket Lake and is similar to what AMD does with their Infinity Fabric settings. So with the Core i7-11700K, the default mode when running with DDR4 3200MHz memory is a 1 to 2 ratio, which can therefore negatively impact performance. However, Ian did clarify in follow-up testing that for the avoidance of doubt in our testing on every microcode to date, all of our motherboards were running at a 1 to 1 ratio. And for those of you wondering how much performance is impacted when running with a 1 to 2 ratio, I highly recommend checking out Gamers Nexus testing on the subject. Also, Ian did post some information from some follow-up testing using a new UFI with a more up-to-date microcode update. Their results show us that performance barely changes. So for anyone thinking that with a new BIOS update, they suddenly start seeing a 10 to 20 percent performance uplift well you can kiss that theory goodbye on the plus side they did show better power consumption figures although it's nothing really to write home about and doesn't change the fact that this thing is power hungry and hot what you can gather from looking at all this information is that now we pretty much know how Rocket Lake is going to perform. Its performance is marginally better than Intel's 10th generation, which won't even be noticeable, and in some cases it even loses, and it doesn't seem like that it'll take the performance crown from AMD in anything. Its advantages are really only seen in very niche workloads utilizing AVX 512. Now, performance aside, I wanted to talk about pricing because now we actually have official MSRP data from Intel, whereas before the only information we had to go off of was from a smaller retail store in Milwaukee and Mine Factory, and pricing from different regions most often isn't a direct currency conversion. Therefore, we can take a look at what they're pricing the various SKUs at, how much they actually cost at retail, and whether or not it's justified. Right off the bat, these i9 SKUs are basically DOA. They're too overpriced, especially the 11900K. I don't understand where Intel gets off thinking they can price an 8-core 16-thread part, at $540 in 2021 and expect people to buy it when 
a 5900X will easily destroy it and offers four more cores for about the same price. Intel probably still thinks they are the performance or market leaders where they can charge this much for an 11900K, but newsflash Intel, you're not. All these i9s for the most part only differentiate from the i7s based on artificial segmentation, where they exclusively get thermal velocity boost for an extra 1 to 200 megahertz boost, and there are some rumors going around that by default the i9s have their IMC configured for a 1 to 1 ratio, whereas the i7s use a 1 to 2 ratio, but as we've seen, that can easily be changed in the BIOS. So I don't recommend the i9s for really any reason. Now the i7 11700K does look a bit more appealing, at $399, like I said, this CPU when configured correctly will basically deliver 99% of the performance the 11900K would offer. And at $399, it does look a bit more appealing than a 5800X at 449 MSRP. But we all know that MSRP doesn't mean anything these days and the actual retail prices can totally change one's buying decision. At Micro Center, currently the 11700K is listed for $520 for pre-order, so that's $120 over Intel's MSRP. Comparing that to something like a 5800X, and now all of a sudden the tables have turned, and by the way, the 5800X seems to be slightly discounted to $430, which definitely makes it more feasible and a lot more appealing. And of course, like I've been saying a lot lately, the 10 gen parts are offering really good value, and it looks like the 10850K has dropped further to $320, and that right there is just impeccable value. 10 cores, 20 threads, fairly high on the boost, really good gaming performance, good productivity and multi-core performance, this CPU to me is the one to get. And the way I look at it, it pretty much cannibalizes Intel's i5 and i7 SKUs. The 11600K also runs into the same problems, where it has an official MSRP of $262, but is actually more expensive than a 5600X, and is also priced the same as a 10850K, being listed at $320. So you tell me which CPU looks like the better option, because I know which one I'd get, it's not even a competition. Intel's 11 Gen Rocket League CPUs are a tough sell, and I don't really see anyone choosing these CPUs use over a Ryzen 5000 processor or Intel's own 10th gen parts. This is a terrible turnout for the consumer because had Intel brought some good competition to the market with Rocket Lake, it would have forced AMD to then retaliate by either releasing some more economical SKUs like a 5600 non-X or a 5700X at lower prices or simply just do a price cut of existing SKUs. However, the opposite has occurred and the 5000 series look even more appealing than before so AMD isn't going to be incentivized to do anything because they'll know that the 5000 series will continue to fly off the shelves. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.